Hi everyone, this is All Like The One here. Um, today I'm just going to be talking a little bit about the hidden danger in the forest, um, also known as the tick, or I believe in America they're referred to as jiggers. Um, yeah, I've been spending hours and days out in the countryside, in the forests, up mountainsides all my life, and um, I've never been bitten by a tick before. <coughs> until recently um yeah on my last um stay out in the forests i um managed to pick up a couple of ticks and um yeah so i thought i'd make um a video about this little pest um especially as june and july are the peak times for uh for these insects yeah, the reason there are so many ticks around in June and July is because they like the heat. Uh, this is the time when they um, reproduce the most. And this is the period where you're most likely to uh, pick some up. Um, ticks need um, a lot of moisture in the air. They like moist environments, humid environments such as forests are perfect for them. Um, yeah, they can live for a long time, um, up to a year, I believe, without um, without eating, i.e., drinking your blood. Um, but they can't survive very long at all in a dry environment, which is a a good way to kind of uh, kill them. So that's why I'm making this video. Um, now we have to get down to what exactly is a tick. Um, a tick is an insect, it's uh, from the arachnid family, spider family. Um, it lives, it feeds by attaching itself onto mammals, animals, humans, birds, even reptiles. And what it does, it bores through the top layer of your skin and uh, feeds off your blood, basically. And that's how it, um, that's how it feeds. Uh, you'll often find ticks in areas where there is a lot of wildlife, uh, particularly deer. Um, as was the case with me, the forest I picked my ticks up in is there are hundreds of deer there. Um, so that's why they're so prevalent. Um, some ticks have to actually drink uh, your blood to reproduce. Um, only the females obviously uh, give birth to babies. Um, yeah, they have up to 2,000 at a time, which is not very reassuring. So now we move on to why a tick, uh, why it's a danger, potentially. Um, in itself, a tick is not dangerous. Um, the bite does not hurt. Uh, you probably won't even notice the tick biting you. Uh, the only way you'll observe it is if you look at the area of skin and you see it actually embedded into you. Um, what can be potentially even fatal and definitely dangerous are the diseases that a tick can potentially carry. The most common disease that a tick will carry and also the one that you should worry about the most is something called Lyme's disease. Uh, the medical name for that is uh, Lyme borreliose, I believe. That's how you pronounce it. Um, and this can manifest itself in many ways as far as um, symptoms are concerned. Uh, once you've been bitten, you've noticed it and you've removed it, or even if the tick has disattached itself um, after taking enough of your blood, yeah, what will happen is um, you may get a rash in the area that you've been bitten and this can sometimes look like a bruise and it's uh, spreads out in a circular kind of way um, and that can be the first symptom so if you've got any unusual rashes which looks like they have a center on them could be kind of purple, bruise, bruisey looking, yellowy um, then anything like that you should uh, get yourself checked out as soon as possible other symptoms um, can include flu-like symptoms, headaches, 
nausea. Now all these symptoms so far, they are the early stage symptoms of Lyme's disease. If it's left untreated, it can do a lot more damage potentially and it's known to cause damage to your central nervous system so that will affect muscle control, uh, can cause strokes, even death, paralysis so you know it's a nasty thing and uh, apart from that it's uh, very difficult to fully treat if it's caught early, uh, the earlier it's caught the more likelihood there is of, uh, of you being cured um, you know you'll be prescribed a course of strong antibiotics um, another potential danger of these ticks is that they carry uh, several other diseases potentially um, let's see a couple of them here um, let's see now I'm just reading them out here um, Q fever Colorado tick fever Tularemia, tick-borne relapsing fever, babe, uh, bab, babesiosis, I um, think that's how it's pronounced, echlerchiosis, sorry, I've no idea how to pronounce these words, and tick-borne meningocephalitis, as well as bovine anaplasmosis. Now all these, and there are more, that's not um, the exhaustive list, so you can see it can potentially carry some really nasty stuff and uh, can affect you in many different ways from nausea, headaches to death so um, yeah you really want to watch out for these little things now there are several types of tick and they vary in size um, and they also vary in colour I had two on me as I said, uh, one of them was um, black with a red spot on it and the other one was a kind of light greyish colour uh, so they're quite hard to spot um, advice I have read is to wear light clothes when uh, you're in an area that has ticks potentially because you can spot them more easily um, another form of way of protecting yourself against ticks is uh, obviously wear long trousers long sleeves, cover up, wear a hat, don't leave any skin exposed any skin you do leave exposed you can treat with um, an appropriate pesticide such as DEET um, DEET isn't a particularly nice thing um, you know that in itself is quite a harmful product and can cause a lot of irritation to a human um, another alternative is using something called permethrin which is a chemical um, available in a lot of outdoor shops it comes as a spray and you treat your clothes with, clothes with it and it's uh, very effective and also very toxic and not good for humans either particularly um, but will kill m mosquitoes on contact so that just gives you an idea of how nasty this thing is but will also keep the um, ticks at bay. Um, until now I haven't actually used any product uh, except for DEET I suppose I've used now and again when, but not to guard against ticks to actually guard against um, gnats when I was in the highlands um, sorry not gnats midges um, but now I am actually considering using permethrin to treat my clothes good thing about permethrin is that once your clothes are treated they're good for about six months so yeah it's pretty lethal stuff but I am thinking about using some small amounts on uh, vulnerable areas you know around the bottom of your trousers uh, end of your cuffs uh, around the collar you know that kind of thing um, so yeah I think I'll be doing that in the future and also just checking myself more regularly for ticks when I'm in potentially tick infested areas Um, now, as far as treating or removing the tick, um, there's a definite method to it. You don't want to just rip it out, basically. Um, now, there are lots of myths about how to remove a tick and what's the best way. I've, 
I know people that swear by the method of covering it in a fat such as Vaseline and uh, this suffocates the tick and um, and it releases and uh, you can get them out in that way um, I'm pretty sure that works many people swear by it however on the other side of that um, I've also heard that using that method can cause the tick a lot of discomfort hence why they release um, but during that process it can also cause them to regurgitate their stomach contents back into you and this is where this is a very dangerous thing because that's where all the um, bacteria and all the diseases are kept so it just if it has anything in you and you haven't got it already you'll probably pretty much have it after that and that goes for uh, any other method which damages the tick in any way you have to remove it the tick in whole you cannot leave any bits of the tick inside you uh, the feeding parts um, if you leave the feeding parts inside you uh, that allows bacteria to fester and that's also you know it's very likely that you'll get something that way um, another method I've heard of is uh, burning them off with a match again causes the stomach contents to be ejected you do not want that um, now I've bought some equipment here to deal with tick bites um, when I found the first tick on me um, I actually had my girlfriend remove it I did not actually have because it was in, in the middle of my back I couldn't reach it obviously I had her check me over for ticks when I got back and she found it then um, yeah all we had was a, some cotton thread and this is a viable method as well what you do is you wrap um, you basically wrap tie a knot, a very simple knot around the head of the tick now you have to make sure that the knot is as low as possible and you get it around basically not around its body but around its neck literally around its neck now you're dealing with a neck that is potentially almost microscopic so you have to be very careful and um, once you've secured a good knot around it you gently begin to pull away from the skin at 90 degrees you don't want to come at an angle because there's more likely uh, there's a greater likelihood that you'll damage the tick which I repeat again you do not want to damage the tick and uh, you just want to give it several light tugs away from the body it will pull a bit of the skin potentially it's not pleasant and that's why I'm going to take extra care from now on so I never get bitten by these little again um, so as I said keep tugging it tugging it and um, eventually it will kind of rip out of there or let go um, afterwards I recommend and I did do this uh, fortunately I have a microscope available to me and was able to examine it under a microscope the tick and uh, noted that the tick was actually intact so it didn't leave any bits inside my skin <clears throat> alternatively you can do this with a simple magnifying glass obviously I examined it with a magnifying glass also and you could get enough detail out of it to note whether it had been damaged or not also it's a good idea to um, look at with a magnifying glass at the spot you've been bitten just to make sure there aren't any bits of it left there immediately after you've removed it treat the area with alcohol you know an alcohol swab or iodine you know some kind of anti strong antibacterial agent just to give you a better chance of not catching anything <coughs> now this is quite important uh, keep the tick do not throw it away it's a lot easier to test the tick for the disease rather than having yourself tested um, there is actually no accurate disease uh, there is actually no accurate test for Lyme's disease they can kind of guess at it at best I'll explain why it's important to keep the tick in a moment but first of all just a couple of products that are available on the market 
they're made by many different companies make these but this is essentially a tick removal kit uh, you get this and you also get a couple of these alcohol pads <coughs> excuse me and essentially this is just like a pair of tweezers as you can see you press down and they open and expand um, as I said they open and expand and you can see the little hole in the middle there and that is where you catch the tick by its head and the prescribed method is once you've got a secure hold of it and make sure you've got it in exactly the right position you give it a few twists to either side and then gently begin this kind of action up and down as I explained earlier the same procedure as with the string you know a s small cotton thread so uh, that's a handy little device it's very inexpensive few pounds but just makes the removal of ticks a lot more safe and uh, and easier also um, just in case you're wondering what they look like here's a few examples of them as I said they vary in color but that is the shape that you're looking out for if you see that embedded into you you've got a tick unfortunately now the reason I mentioned earlier for keeping the tick is that it's as I said it's easier to test the actual insect itself for the disease rather than trying to establish um, whether you have it now on the market is available uh, several of these kind of tests um, I'll just open this up uh, this is a, an unused one so you get the actual testing unit itself which is uh, hermetically sealed <coughs> uh, you get a small test tube uh, a wooden stick to crush the insect with, I'll explain that in a second and a small vial of the uh, testing liquid so uh, I've stocked up on a couple of these now now I've been bitten once bitten twice shy as they say so this is what the actual testing unit looks like this is one I've already used if you can see that little black speck in there that is actually the remnant of a tick mmm tasty uh, yeah so essentially what you do you take the tick and you stick it into the small test tube I just showed you um, you pour a couple of the drops of the liquid into the test tube from one test tube to the other test tube with a tick in it and they do provide a pipette so you can suck it up and put it in there easily and then you literally crush the tick until it's just mush uh, once you've crushed it up and made a solution of tick essentially <coughs> you simply get the pipette take a three or four drops of it and stick it into the testing unit so I'll just bring that out again now as you can see here there's a line has developed across here next to the C which means that this one's clear if it comes back positive then uh, there'll be two lines next to the, there'll be one line next to the T and this line here this this line at the top just means that the test has worked and uh, it's negative um, so as I said that's where you drop the uh, solution of uh, tick and within three or four minutes you get your results mm, little bugger yeah so it's um it's a nice simple way and quick way to find out if potentially you have got Lyme's disease unfortunately these kits only test for Lyme's disease they don't test for any of the other 20 nasty things that they could be carrying 
obviously the uh, diseases that it carries are dependent on the area somewhat which country you're in which part of the world um, and they also vary uh, they also are dependent upon other factors such as what type of wildlife is around uh, humidity etc as I said they like the hottest months of the year the most that's when they're most prevalent that's when they're most active and that's when you're most likely to get bitten so this summer watch out um, I actually uh, was bitten in um, in Kent um, but they're prevalent all over the UK even in parks you have to be watch out in public parks even in central London locations believe it or not um, and they're really nasty little things so uh, this is just a word of warning and a bit of advice on how to uh, treat the, the, the tick if you're bitten um, you know and just to alert people as to the danger of ticks I recently have had a friend who got bitten by a tick in her back garden at home in London so um, yeah you really have to watch out for the little buggers so I hope you find that interesting and uh, useful well hopefully it won't be useful to you because hopefully you won't get bitten but if you do then at least you have some idea as to what to do don't panic you're not going to die on the spot or anything um, one thing I did fail to mention is uh, the likelihood of you catching anything off a tick increases the longer the tick is in you uh, the I've heard that the cutoff point is around eight hours. If it's more than eight hours, then you've most likely got whatever it's been carrying, if it's carrying anything at all. So, as I said, it's critical to find them quickly and remove them quickly. Uh, fortunately for me, both ticks that I found on myself uh, came back negative for Lyme's disease. So uh, I was in luck there. Yeah, so seek medical advice as soon as possible if you're unsure about anything uh, one website you can look at is um, I'll just read this out for you <coughs> it's uh, limesdiseaseaction.org.uk I'll uh, annotate that up here um, yeah and they've got some very useful information on uh, ticks everything I've said is there if you want it in a written format <clears throat> but you know these bugs are everywhere so um, just be careful oh sorry okay one more thing I will mention the first tick I was bitten with did actually bite me whilst I was out in the in the wild the second tick um, I transported it home in my clothes or in a bag I'm not sure which um, because I was back for two days and then on the third day is when it bit me uh, I noticed it pretty quickly um, I think it was there for about 20 minutes or so and I believe it was in a jumper or in an item of clothing or on one of my bags um, so uh, you know watch out for ticks for a good two or three days after you've come back from the field after two or three days the likelihood that they'll survive goes down dramatically um, unless wherever they, wherever they are is particularly damp I mean in an average centrally heated house you know the, the air is very dry so um, the lack of moisture in the air will kill them pretty quickly as I said they can live for up to a year without eating which is a gruesome fact um, but they can't survive very long at all without the moisture um, so just check your stuff for up to three to four days after you've come back from a field you know when you first get home check everything f thoroughly and then you know just give a qu few quick checks over the next so this was a short video about the dangers of ticks um, I hope that was informative I hope you find it useful this is All Outdoor One signing out 
Take care.